In the video where we removed the U-joints, we explained how we saved $45 a joint by purchasing yoke kits. Because they come assembled and painted, you have to first remove the paint to access the snap rings, and then remove the universal joint from the yoke before you can compress them into a different joint. Carb cleaner makes short work of the paint. You see me scratching with a pick here to score the paint and to make the carb cleaner penetrate deeper. But only because I'm impatient. If you let it soak and dissolve, it will easily wipe out. We don't have all day. Removing the snap rings and the universal joint from the yoke works exactly the same as the technique I covered in the previous video with one exception. When you remove the new U-joint, you actually want to press them all the way out. The reason why is because you can't afford to mar or damage the end caps with vice grips, so you want to push them as far as they can go. You want to use a flat jaw plier and come at it from the top to prevent biting into the caps, and it's much easier to do this without damaging them if the tapered cap is pressed all the way through as far as it will go. Then we take the Deepwell 9 16th inch socket, place it over the post, align it in the hole, and simply press the other cap through. Once the other cap is pressed, you can remove the joint and the cap and toss the yoke. We're starting with the front shaft. Because we'll be pressing an assembled yoke onto the A joint, we're going to start on the B joint first. Clean all the gunk out of the bores using your favorite solvent in a rag. I'm using carb cleaner. It's a good idea to grease the bores, but you'll see we didn't do that here. You'll also want to add an extra dab of grease to the end caps. Excess will press out, and there's no need to fill the caps entirely. We just add a little extra in there. Do an initial compression with the vise to line up the caps and the U-joint. When you do this, you want to keep the joint dead center to prevent it from knocking a needle bearing out, thus crushing it and ruining it. Once you've got the caps pressed in, get a socket and press one cap deep enough to clear the snap ring groove. Install a snap ring. We'll be compressing the cap against it from the other side with a socket before installing the other snap ring. The snap rings need to fit snug. You might need to fight with the correct ones a bit to get them fully seated. We'll get to that. The U-joint should feel firm, not loose. We're about to show you how to deal with that if that happens, but first let's install the front yoke on the A-joint. This one's easy because you only press in one axis. It's the least time-consuming one in the job. I want to take a minute to talk about the snap rings and why they're an important aspect of this job. Mitsubishi supplies four different colored snap rings in each kit, and you have to use the same colored snap ring in both sides of each axis. They range from 503 ten thousandths of an inch to 551 ten thousandths in roughly 12 ten thousandths thickness variations, or 1.28 to 1.37 millimeters in three hundredths of a millimeter increments. That all depends on what country you're in. We're going to install the yoke with the thinnest ones in the bunch as an illustration. The service manual says the standard value is between 4 ten thousandths to 12 ten thousandths of an inch, or 0.01 to 0.03 millimeters. That means only one set of snap rings is correct. To inspect it, they say to use a brass punch and knock the caps to one side using a hammer, and check it with a feeler gauge. But good luck finding one that small. And since we don't have a feeler gauge that small, we're improvising. We're using a 10 millimeter socket against the cap to accomplish the same thing. There shouldn't be a gap that you can see or feel, and the joint shouldn't be loose and floppy. Both axes should feel exactly the same. It should require at least a tap with the socket and a hammer to drive them home. If the snap rings seat easily like these did, bet that they're the wrong ones. I mentioned earlier about installing them in pairs. The reason why is pretty clear. Even though the increments of the different snap rings are tiny at 12 ten thousandths of an inch, they're intended to keep the joint centered with the correct pressure on the caps. If you mixed snap ring colors, it would install the joint out of center, causing vibration. You don't want that in a drive shaft, and Mitsubishi's instructions in the service manual are very specific. That feels much better, and that's what's up. So we're cleaning out the paint for the last yoke and getting it ready for the D-joint now. Almost there. Once the pinion flange is back on the drive shaft, all we need to do is assemble the rest of the B-joint, and we're finished with this thing. Wait, 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 wait. What do I see here? This is messed up, man. Really, Mitsubishi? Really? I guess it's do as I say, not as I do, right? 
We had to turn the camera off and stomp around a bit over this one. Then we checked the yoke we installed and it was okay. But what you see here illustrates that if you didn't do the work yourself, you don't know it's right. Check what the factory workers did. One out of three of our yokes was assembled incorrectly. All right, if you're doing what we're doing and you're ordering assembled yokes and pressing the U-joints out, it's very easy to get these dirty. So before you do your reassembly, if you look at this, there's all kinds of fuzz and uh, dirt and stuff that just stuck to the grease because that's what it likes to do. It likes to stick to things. So before you reassemble these, you want to wipe down all the posts on the U-joint, get all the dirt and grime out of there, and you notice, look at that. You don't want that ending up in the joint. After you get the dirt off of it, you want to take some clean grease and apply it to the uh, inside of the caps. You see they've got the center posts of it already pre-greased and it's stuck to some fuzz and lint and stuff from both the rags and just the environment. But I like to clean that stuff out. The inside of the spare caps that come in the box actually have a dab of grease in them, but I put more in it. Look at the inside of the cap and we're going to put a dab of grease inside of each one of these. All right. Now with the grease in there, it's time to press it back in. We're just going to do an initial compression here with the vise, and then we're going to use sockets to drive it the rest of the way home. So after we got that lined up, go ahead and hold the joint. And it's really helpful when you have a second pair of hands in the garage. All right, you want to check it because you don't want to drive it too far home. You just want to get it past that groove there for the snap ring on one side and then the other side will press against the snap ring. And that looks good. So let's put a snap ring in. Alright, that one's in there. Drop my socket. You can see grease squish out of both sides. Alright, almost. Gotta go a little further. Alright. Alright. Now let's try to get a snap ring in that. It feels awfully loose. I'm not sure we have the cap all the way down. So I think we're gonna try one more time using something that's a little stronger than the vise. That looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get a snap ring in that. Went on the front side, but not on the back side. I'm going to give that a light tap. So, it looks like that snap ring is, first off, it's binding too tight. So what we want to do is go with the thinner snap ring on both sides to give it room to seat. We're going to go ahead and flip this back over and put a different snap ring in it. Starting with the silvers, which are uh, the thinnest of the bunch, to see if we can get better results with this. Doesn't appear to be seating. There we go. All right, I don't like that, so it's coming back out. There you go. It feels pretty good. Let's try the other side. You see there's the dab of grease inside of there. Each one of these. It's in there. Too easy. I still think we need bigger snap rings. I physically see a gap.
We got smart this time and greased the cap bores to make compressing with the vise a little bit less like work. The reason we saved the second half of the B joint for last is because it gives us an opportunity to get a feel for the A and D joints first. The center of the shaft offers too much leverage to feel it out without using the 12 10 thousandths feeler gauge that we don't have. So we base this last set by how easy it is to install the snap rings. It's an acceptable method but certainly not as scientific. You really do develop a feel for this. We illustrated both scenarios with too tight and too loose so you could see how we dealt with it. As long as you can tell the tension is even on both axes of the joints, you're good to go. I'll keep looking for a 12 10 thousandths feeler gauge, but I'm confident in what we've accomplished. We can say we did a better job than Mitsubishi at following instructions. That's it, boys and girls. We got a rebuilt drive shaft. It's that simple. She needs paint. Let's put it back on the car and see what the heck is up. You know all this is getting edited out anyway. Of course. <laughs> I like making the work for myself.